Hey Nathan, it's the first Monday of December, which is a wonderful thing because after the whole month of No Shave November and with the onset of the cold weather, the beards are out in full force. Now you know you all may or may not know this, but it's no secret, I freaking love beards. I think when I first realized that I really love beards was when I came to the realization that I will never myself be able to have one beard envy, I guess. But I just think they look great. They they really can take a man's jaw and just really define it well. And I don't know, it just gives them kind of this really cool and manly aesthetic. So I often um, kind of put the pressure on Nathan, especially during the cold winter months, to grow his nice, full, thickest beard. And of course, I don't think that just like every guy should grow to a beard. I just think that they're cool. I think it's like a cool thing that people can do. I mean, like I can't grow a beard, but I can have like a cool, you know, whatever kind of hairstyle I want. But men, you know, it's kind of something unique and cool that they can do with their own hair. Not that men can't have their own cool hairstyles either. It's just like... I don't know, it's just something extra. I think it's cool. Some beards turn out a little differently than you might expect though. No, no, I don't mean like that. Okay, have you ever met like a dude, say in the summertime, and then, and he's clean shaven and stuff, and then when winter comes around, he grows a beard and this happens. This phenomenon has been dubbed a ginger beard and their prevalence amongst people with brown or blonde hair has become noted more frequently recently, I think because of the rising popularity of beards in general. Even Nathan has a few beautiful flecks of copper throughout his mostly dark brown, there's, there's a few white hairs in there, but mostly dark brown beard. But like, why does this happen? Okay, so our hair color is determined by genetics and the specific alleles that characterize hair color are incomplete dominant hereditary traits. So this means when you get a bunch of different alleles for hair coloring, they will all have some say in how the hair turns out. Sure, some will have more influence than other, but they will all combine together to create a somewhat unique hair coloring and they will also determine whether or not that hair color is consistent throughout the body. Yes, horny hamster, all kinds of body hair, even the pupes kind. <laughs> so along with the fact of alleles like influencing each other to create a uniquely blended hair color, not only do your genes from your parents influence you, but from like all of your ancestors. They, they can all have a play in how your hair color turns out, which is why sometimes parents can have a somewhat unexpected hair colored child. Now I know all of that was very well spoken and sounded very intelligent, but we're going to get super science right now. Okay, so the gene MC1R makes a protein called melanocortin-1. This protein is supposed to convert pheomelanin, which is a red pigment, into eumelanin, which is a black pigment. When that gene is mutated, there's less of that protein to convert the red pigmented hair into the black pigmented hair. So basically, people with super red hair and fair skin and all of that stuff got mutated versions of the gene MC1R. Whereas people with like red hair tendencies either on their head or elsewhere on their bodies may have only gotten one mutated version of the gene or that they have other genes and alleles that influence what happens to them more so than that just one specific gene. Hopefully that all makes sense. I know it's a little confusing, but it's actually, it was kind of hard to find information on this topic. Apparently that intriguing question just hasn't been researched much. Um, it might be possibly due to the fact that uh, having like brown hair and a red beard, none of that is linked to uh, disease or anything dangerous, and so it's not as um, urgent to study. I guess geneticists have uh, more pressing issues to research. Oh, scientists. Always just trying to, you know, help people's lives before they just answer our stupid questions. Narwhals, have you ever randomly discovered red hair in your beard or in the beard of a friend? Need a friend here. Nathan, you and I were pretty excited when we discovered red in your beard a few years ago. Or at least I was. Pretty much everything about your beard excites me. We will see it and you attach to it, Nathan, on Wednesday.